you so very much for joining us here today at Church on the Rock. We're so excited to have you, and we pray that God has a very specific word for you today. If you haven't checked out our website, let me urge you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. There you can find all of our latest news, blog posts, and messages. Also, while you're there, you can very easily give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the very top right-hand corner of the screen of any web page. Thank you again for joining us today, and let us prepare ourselves to hear from God. Turn to John's Gospel, chapter 3, and, uh, you know, I was going to read just a verse, but I'm going to read a few more verses because they're just too good not to read. This is kind of when Jesus, Nicodemus has come to Jesus and said, you know, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, what does that mean? Uh, How can I go into my mother's womb again and be born? And Jesus begins to explain to him about there's a natural birth and then there's a spiritual birth. And so we're going to pick the story up here in verse, uh, let's go back to verse 5. Jesus replied, the truth is no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water, or that's natural birth, and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. Gosh, and you know, I, I just wish I could stay there and talk a while. Humans can just produce human life. That's all we can do. We can teach. We can train. We can say, stay in your car seat. We can do. But we can still, humans can produce human life. That's, that's all we can do. But the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. What do you mean, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, I'm telling you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't even believe me when I tell you about the things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly believe if I tell you what's going on in heaven? For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. There's no judgment awaiting those who trust in him. But those who do not trust him have been judged already for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed and they'll be punished. But those who do what is right come to the light gladly so everyone can see that they're doing what God wants. Now, all of that don't really have to do with my message. Like I said, it's just too good not to read. It's just great stuff. The holiday season. We're here. Thanksgiving is now behind us. Hopefully not. Hopefully every day will be a day of Thanksgiving. But the day we set aside to pause and say thank you, the day that set aside on the calendar is behind us. Christmas is upon us. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Easter Sunday's not far behind that. The list goes on and on. It seems we have more holidays than ever uh, these days. Seems like we're celebrating something every week. In fact, we're celebrating something today. Who knows what today is? Anybody? Got a few of you? Today's Pearl Harbor Day. Today we remember 
the bombing of Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. The U.S. got involved in World War II when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. And today is the national celebration of uh, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. There's celebrations that go on, um, you know, all the time. So in light of that, you're going to get a message on holidays this morning. We're going to talk about holidays, celebrations. What do they mean? What are they all about? And ironically, all of these, all of these holidays can really be summed up with one scripture. I'm, I'm going to give you actually a couple, but it really already... I, I tell people all the time, I, I preach the same message every week. I just use different texts. But there's really one message. Was like one guy asked his pastor one time, he said, how come every time I come to church, all you sing's away in a manger and up from the grave he arose? And the guy, pastor says, because you only come on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> yeah. But there was... Uh, the, the, the scripture that I really want to focus on this morning, it's been called the gospel in a nutshell. A world-renowned doctor of theology was asked one time. He was asked in an interview, in all of your years of theological studies of the scripture, the Greek and the Hebrew, and, and all of the studies of the scripture, what would you say is your greatest... Uh, uh, one, one thing that you have determined, your, the greatest uh, uh, biblical discovery, I guess, that, that you've come across. And after a short pause, he responded without batting an eye, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's the gospel in a nutshell. Thanksgiving. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. We just come through Thanksgiving. We spent a couple of weeks talking about Thanksgiving this season. It's a time when we pause and we give thanks to God for all that God has given to us. And we give thanks not only to God, but we give thanks to others. Remember, we talked about one week, those things most precious. Those things and those people that God have put in our life that we need to pause and say thank you for being a good daddy, for being a good mom, for being a great friend, for being a good kid, for being, thank you. Thank you. Th those things that are most precious in our life that we say thank you. Um, it's a time for giving thanks for all that's been given to us. Uh, but, but, but hear that, for God so loved the world, he gave. He gave. He gave. Giving thanks for what he's given us. Most any time we give thanks, it's because somebody has given us. The, the idea is, is, is to give thanks thanks back to God for what God has already given us. Uh, that's why we call it thanksgiving, not thanks taking. We're giving thanks for what he's given us. You don't give thanks unless something's been given to you first. When somebody gives you something, you say, thank you. I give you thanks back, but I don't just walk around saying, thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you. No, I say thank you in response to you giving something to me. So that's why we have thanksgiving, because something's already been given to us. The Scripture says, uh, uh, what, what, what about Christmas? Christmas is coming up. Let's talk about Christmas. The Scripture says, for unto you a child is born. Unto you a son is given. A son is given to you. Thank you. What a gift. See, a lot of people have this idea that Jesus became a Savior on the cross. No, no, no. The Bible says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. He was born a Savior. The birth of Christ, we were given an incredible gift of a Savior. He was a Savior. Thank you. You don't have to debate. and You don't have to 
get in arguments, fight, just say thank you. You don't have to be a God hater and a church hater. You don't have to do, just say thank you. God gave his son, his son, his only son. Because he so loved the world, I can't even comprehend that. Because I love you, but I won't give my child for you. I won't. I love each and every one of you. But I won't give my daughters or my grandbabies to die for anybody. Because I don't so love you. I love you. But he so loved us. And his love's beyond love. It's beyond human love. It's beyond what we can think of. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. I mean, I often joke and I sort of say Christmas is a time when we spend money we don't have to buy things we can't afford to give to people we don't even like, things that they don't even need. But having said that, I have to admit I love Christmas. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Uh, I love Christmas weather, if it will finally get cool. I love Christmas music. I love Christmas trees. I, I love Christmas decorations. I love the Christmas spirit. I love Christmas movies. I love National Lampoon's Holiday Christmas. I love Cousin Eddie. You know, I mean, the, the, I, I love It's a Wonderful Life. I mean, you know, I have to watch it every year, year after year. I love Christmas movies. I, I love everything. I find people are just friendlier at Christmas time. You just walk by people and they say, hey, Merry Christmas. You know, it's just there's something about that. But what about gifts? Because it all goes back to the gifts. Because we buy gifts and we wrap gifts and we unwrap gifts. And we give gifts and we receive gifts. And we return gifts we don't like. And it's funny because I, I actually, I, I kind of call them, they're not really gifts anymore. They're more like trades, you know. Because a, a gift is something that's kind of given. Now we say, well, we got to get them something. Because remember, they got us that last year. Well, they, all they got us was this, so I'm not getting this. You know, we get, so we sort of swap, you know. We have swap meets is what we do. But anyway, uh, gifts. Where did this gift-giving thing come from anyway at Christmas? Some, some give credit to gifts to the wise men giving gifts. They brought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh uh, for the baby Jesus and I, I, I can buy that. I think that has some legitimacy to it. Others, I think more accurate, likens it to God giving his son Jesus as a supreme gift to us. For God so loved the world that he gave. Whatever the case, gift giving has become a huge part of Christmas. Christmas is all about the joy of giving. And, and I, I'm sure, I suppose we all enjoy receiving gifts too. Um, I'm not sure I need another battery operated tie or, you know, it's, or a set of steak knives that'll cut a tin can into and, you know, great, great gifts and all of these things. But I, I love to get gifts, but I also understand what Jesus meant in Acts 20, 35, when he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because uh, I love to give gifts, especially good gifts. I, I, you, you know, it's so fun to give a gift that you know a person really needs or a person really appreciates, something that's just unique to that person. That brings so much joy rather than getting another tie that you don't need. You know, I think, and I think that's why God was so excited about giving his only son Jesus to us. He knew how bad we needed it. For God so loved the world, do you understand? You're doomed without this. You are helpless and hopeless. You are without hope. You are forever eternally lost without this. The blood of bulls and goats 
God said in one place that I, I no more desire the blood of bulls and goats. Your sacred meetings are making me sick. I'm tired of you bringing your animals to the temple and shedding blood for your sins. It's not working anymore. You are hopelessly lost unless I do something drastic. And I'm giving away the most precious thing that I have. What a sacrifice. What a gift. What a gift. He knew how bad we needed it. Jesus knew. I think that's why he willingly laid down his life for us. He, yeah, he sweat in the garden of Gethsemane. His sweat became his drops of blood. And he said, if there's any other way, let's do it this way. Nevertheless, I know they need it. He hung on the cross and said, don't even charge this to their charge. Don't even find them guilty. They don't know what they're doing. What a gift. What a gift. He knew how bad we needed it. You, you follow that right on through with the disciples, with the New Testament church. They sold all their possessions and gave to those in need. What makes a person do that? They sold everything they had, and they just gave it to people that needed it. They, they, they shared everything in common, they said. that You know, they just, I, I remember, I remember, out at Willow Creek one year, I was there, and, and one of the speakers, I, th I think it was Bill Hybels, the pastor there, that was talking about they were doing a capital campaign to build a building, and they, I mean, they were raising, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, and they had a service, and it was just a huge service. It was finally, it had been building for, for weeks and months, and it came to the day of giving, and they were having celebrations and all of this, and he said there was two guys in the back. One of them looked at the other, and he said, man, what just happened here? He said, I don't know. I think I just gave away my house. I'm not sure, you know. It's just there's something hilarious about giving when you know there's a need and you know there's a celebration and you know the great need for it and you know that it's just, it's just that's why Jesus so willingly laid down his life for us. We were without hope. The New Testament church sold all their stuff and they gave to those that, that needed it because they knew how bad people needed to hear and receive the great news that Jesus died for their sins. That, that same spirit is what drives holidays like Veterans Day, Memorial Day. Veterans who say, you know what? I'm going to leave my family. I'm leaving my kids. I'm leaving my wife. I'm leaving my job to go and fight for my country. And then Memorial Day, the day we remember those who gave the ultimate price and laid down their life and left their blood on a battlefield and died for us. The, the Bible says, what greater love is this that a man lay down his life for his friends, let alone People he don't even know, but for a cause. For when, when men see a need, they give. Remember David, little David? David, David come out and he saw this Philistine, and, and, and all the people are running around crazy because this Philistine's so big and he's threatening to him. And remember David's question? David said, Guys, is there not a cause? What's going on here? Is there not a need? Are you kidding me? This Philistine is defying the armies of the living God. What are you doing? Why are you retreating? So what if we die? This guy is defying the God of Israel. Is there not a cause? Is there not a need? Somebody give me a rock and a rag. <laughs> is there not a need? I'll lay down my life if necessary, but I tell you what, I remember a day when a lion and a bear came after my daddy's sheep, and I took them and killed them with my bare hand. Somebody give me a rock. Is there not a need? Yes, the need is great, but he's not as great as my God. The same God that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. Is there not a need? That's why we give away tons of food at the back door every year. There's such a need. There's such a need. The things that we do every year, the you know, fun days of summer, you know, that we had this past year where all of the kids, over 2,000 people at Light the Night this year, you know, that... 
That's why, that's why we just took a thousand pairs of shoes to people who have no shoes just a week or two ago. That's why we give coats and, and clothes and blankets to those people in need. So we just paid $200 to have a guy have two teeth pulled because his mouth was so infected and he came here and his mouth was just, he was tormented. And so we sent him to the dentist and had his teeth, got him some antibiotics and got his teeth. Well, I don't know the guy, but he had a need. And we can't meet every need, but just because we can't meet every need don't mean we don't meet any need. You, maybe you can't feed 100 people, but feed one. The guy's teeth was infected. Get his teeth pulled. Is there not a need? And we see this, as John just said, day after day after day, we have needs. That's why we, we pay rent and power bills and water bills and buy gas. And it's, a, it's a spirit of giving because the need is so great, and there's no way we can meet all of them, but we can meet some of them. And that's why you bring your tithes and your offerings and your gifts into the storehouse so there will be enough to meet the needs of the less fortunate. This is why we do what we do. And it all revolves around a spirit of giving. It's a, it's a holiday spirit all year long. It, and it brings with it not only great joy, but great blessing. Great blessing. Holidays. I love the holidays. I love Christmas time. It's true that Christmas time this year won't be as joyful for some people as it, as it is others. Some of you have lost family members this year. This will be the first Christmas without them. I was thinking about that the other day. There are people who've lost their spouse. This will be the first Christmas without them. People who've lost a child, and there will be an empty place at the house. There won't be gifts under the tree for that child. And it's a sad time. It's a, it's a hard time. People who've lost a parent, people who've lost a close friend. For some, they'll spend Christmas in a hospital this year. For many, they'll spend Christmas in a nursing home this year. Some will have nobody to come and see them. Hopefully, prayerfully, we as a church can help make those holidays more joyful. Somehow, we can be a gift to those people. We want to do everything we can to be a gift to as many as we can. That's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do. You got Valentine's Day coming up. We don't say much about Valentine's Day uh, kids have been bringing little Valentines to school as long as I can remember. Um, it's still a gift of, of giving. Um, I love Valentine's Day. It's my anniversary, so it's always easy to remember. I never forget my anniversary. So, uh, Valentine's Day is a great day to celebrate love. Last but not least, there's Easter. And I love Easter. Perhaps the greatest gift God ever gave to mankind, maybe the greatest gift Jesus ever gave to mankind was being raised from the dead. What a gift. What hope that brings us. What joy that should bring to those who have lost loved ones. The great and glorious resurrection. You understand, without Easter, Thanksgiving means nothing. Without Easter, Christmas means nothing. So what if Jesus was born? People are born every day. People die every day. But folks don't get up out of the grave every day. Easter is what brings everything else together. Easter's what makes the spirit of giving all worthwhile because God not only gave his son, he regave his son. Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, 
It doesn't even say if you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross. It says if you believe God raised him up, you shall be saved. If you believe in Easter, if you believe in resurrection, if you believe that he's alive, oh my gosh, what a need. What a need we have to help the unchurched, unsaved, unconnected believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Not just that he was born in a manger. We can get people to believe he was born in a manger, put out nativity scenes and all this. Yeah, I believe there was a baby born in Bethlehem somewhere. I don't, that's not, but we have to get people to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, that he's alive. This is the message of the gospel. What a need we have. We, we have no choice. Is there not a call? Is there, is there not a mandate for the church today to get unchurched, unsaved, unconnected, to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and that he is alive and well? Again, thank you so very much for joining us here today at Church on the Rock. I pray that our message has impacted you in a positive way. If you would like to share how our ministries are impacting you, you have a specific prayer request, or maybe you want more information about our church or how to get involved in our ministries, you can easily email us at pray at jesusistherock.org, or you can look us up on Facebook or Twitter at Church on the Rock, Pascagoula. Have a very blessed day.